Hello everyone. Uh, we have with us Mr. Kaushik Mukherjee, CEO and co-founder of Sugar Cosmetics with us. Hi Kaushik, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Ritika. How are you? All well. So, shall we just begin with a round of questions? I have too many questions for you. I hope I have all the answers. Sure, let's start. Great. So, if you could just tell us, you know, about the media initiative, social media initiative that you're taking for the seventh year anniversary celebrations, and also the insight that is going behind this broad-based marketing strategy. So, uh, everybody in the company is super pumped right now because seven is a huge milestone, at least uh, you know from where the company started. And uh, right now, this year, we are trying to, you know, include our customers. and uh, the people who basically gotten us to this uh, milestone as a part of the celebration so uh, right up at the beginning of the month we had this uh, social media filter on instagram we trying to see if that can move to other platforms as well wherein uh, it's a very simple filter wherein there's a birthday cake and people are blowing a candle to uh, wish us because i think normally we celebrate milestones by pushing out uh, a lot of uh, press releases about how this is the milestone which we had targeted and this is how fast we reached it but this time it's different this time we want to include our customers as a part of the celebration make it more cordial make it warmer because if there's one feeling that everybody feels and this milestone is gratitude um, given how competitive the market is and you know that we would be nowhere had our customers and our fans not chosen to continue to support us over the years and we know how crazy the last two years have been so yeah very grateful right right and um... what would you say about the brand building journey for sugar because you started out in 2015 and today sugar is a big name everybody knows sugar so how has uh, your brand building journey been and how would you say has it evolved over time so uh, i think we when we started out we knew we wanted to create a brand but frankly we didn't have a manual which said you know do a b c d e d mm-hmm. steps in that particular sequence and you end up creating a brand so we just focused on starting out by doing what we knew we could do which is create very very high quality products at a um attractive price point and uh, when that got started it's always i mean we were always impatient right i remember in the early days we used to push out our products and wait for feedback wait for people to come and repeat purchase it takes time but then over the years we just had many opportunities when there was a risk of becoming impatient and changing the very personality of the brand wherein we've had pressure from the markets to um discount our products launch products which we necessarily didn't think fit within the brand ethos but then when we uh, were a little stubborn in the initial days we stuck to a certain band of price point we were very clear on not just what we wanted to build we were very clear on what we did not want to build and i think you know our conviction and has been tested in the past but today when i look back all that has helped build sugar a brand for the young gen z and millennials who um who've had options in the past but not something that spoke to them so directly i mean today we get more than 400 million impressions on social media across our own handles i'm not even counting um, earned media and that's massive i mean the fact that this has let us reach out to our customers they feel to talk about our products i think uh, mm-hmm. that has helped us build the brand so at one point we used to be d2c only but today we are a digital native brand but uh, we are pretty much an omni channel brand otherwise absolutely so you talked about your target audience also and uh, you know uh, when you started i believe you were targeting the you know neglected uh, female young uh, demographic as i think vinita has also spoken often uh, yes 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 would you say that your target audience has broadened and uh, how are you you know communicating your brand to this target audience that you are now catering so i think the speed at which the target audience is broadening is taken us by surprise because when we had started i mean uh, i mean today we know that it is neglected that time it was just a bet saying that okay all of all the existing options in the market cater to an audience which is let's say 30 and above and mm-hmm. which is probably the age at which makeup became a part of someone's regular routine maybe 10 years back but what we have seen in the last 5 to 6 years with uh, with social media content consumption uh, you know being democratized across your handheld devices exposure like moved up by almost a, almost a decade so the usage also moved up and when your age of usage stops becoming 28 30 and becomes say maybe 21 22 the same products don't work and it's not just because Uh, of a 21 year old being the stereotypical rebel or the 20, or being uh, very spoiled for choice no it's not that it's just because i'll give a simple example 
as we as we all age, uh, our skin gets less moisturized and hydrated. So we're not able to carry off uh, formulations that are uh, very, very matte, for example, because you need to add a creaminess to it for it to be comfortable on the lips. But then with an extremely young target audience, you can make very, very solid mattes, which last for a very long while. None of the existing brands could at that time experiment with that because it would be a bit controversial. It would be a bit antagonizing for their existing customer base. When we started, we didn't have a customer base. So we genuinely just made the product which we thought it would work in India, reached as many people as we could and said, you know what, this lasts really long. And you know, in India, the whole value for money, it's a, India is an aspirational market. So beyond the point, people can pay you what the price you're asking, but the value has to be two three times that. So we were able to, over a period of time, mm -hmm. straddle that niche of catering to the younger audience and offering products that last really long, I think that has helped us position and build the brand over a long period of time. So that's how the audience has shifted. As you said, the, the, the target group has expanded. It, it's actually become much younger than what we started off with. We initially started with maybe 24, 25 year old as the average consumer, but it's actually moved further, um, you know, further up ahead as we speak. Right. Now. Right. So uh, at Goa Fest, I believe Vinita also spoke about how 60% of your sales comes from 30,000 retail stores, but the 90% yes. of discovery happens online, right? Yes. So I picked that up and I wanted to ask you whether, you know, your sales ratio from offline and online channel is still that 60, 40. And uh, you, how do you see this evolving in the, say, the coming years? So as of now, it is 60, 40. But again, I didn't expect that. 60-40 so soon because about the pandemic we were about 40 digital and of course then we went down and once the stores opened by that time the audience was you know waiting to get back to retail and shop so as of now as we're tracking your correct it's about 60-40 now here's something very interesting online the number of channels you sell in uh I mean, they are limited. You will have one Amazon, one Nike, and, and your own channels, of course. Retail, there's a lot of green field expansion possible when you're opening up new stores. So because we have that lever, I think there is a good chance that 60, 40 may over the next few years become 65, 35 maybe. Yeah. Um, but I still think that, you know, we won't, our, our digital will continue to scale to hold on to the 35 to 40% because ultimately a lot of our consumers first interact with us online. They see a piece of content which is very engaging or is going viral or is trending. And um, that's when later when they see our store or logo somewhere, they feel that, okay, wait, I've seen this brand somewhere. Let's just walk in. And with yeah. television uh, coming into the fray uh, last year with our uh, the, the ads that we ran on national television, I think the awareness, we're just stretching our awareness beyond the digital first. So that part is going to continue to discover us not offline first, but it's still the majority right now. 60% still uh, finds us online. Right, right. So uh, I'm sure uh, because India is such a vast country, you have to have like, you have to profile your consumers yes. in a correct way. So that's when, you know, data analytics and all of that. So how are you and, you know, them and strategizing your communication in a way that you're speaking to a different consumer in a different way? Right. Fantastic question, firstly. So we obsess about this a lot that, uh, we can't, when we say marketing, it's about who you're marketing to because India is full of consumers who consume different things at different price points. So unless we choose who we want to talk to, we're going to end up spraying and praying and it's not going to work. Uh, so let's take a step back. When you look at the market, so there is the market expanding. It's now why it's expanding. Because the one reason is that a lot of unorganized purchases and trade is becoming unorganized. So when you look at that, that's the bottom of the funnel, getting into the whole you know, price ladder. And when they start buying branded goods, now at the mass level, there are many brands that are you know, doing really well. There's, you know, there's, of course, there's Lakme and there's Blue Heaven and every, all the others. So now what happens when there's a sudden you know, influx of a lot of people purchasing there, mm -hmm. people who are a bit more aspirational feel that, okay, wait, I maybe want another brand because this brand has now become too commoditized. Now, to get that exclusivity, because it's very emotionally linked, it's an emotional purchase, not just functional, the category we're talking about. So you move up the price ladder. And that's why when we profile our target consumer, there is a part of it that is a first time user. But as we expand offline and become more ubiquitous, build our distribution, we've seen that these are our customers, those who've not tried makeup, who are not trying makeup for the first time with us. They've tried mm -hmm. makeup, but now they're looking at 
something which is more aspirational something which makes them feel good which is why they are okay spending 500 rupees on a lipstick but they are okay spending 400 350 on a kajal when maybe something half the price is um is available in the market and when we look at our audience base i think there's a massive you know moving up of audience base from those who used to earlier buy mass products to maybe mass stage or road to premium value premium segment and that's what sugar is uh, been built on so we keep mm-hmm. launching different ranges to experiment with different price points for example there's a, a range called metal within sugar which is priced uh, more premium it's about it's about you know 1100 rupees that's that has its market uh, not online mostly offline and there's mm-hmm. a another sub range which um, is very aggressively priced which mm-hmm. mostly sells in general trade stores so we keep experimenting it to keep track of where the audience is pulses but the core is again the 8 to 10 dollar lipstick so that's uh, you know that's where the market we feel is moving towards right but you know your category is actually quite competitive and every day there are new players entering with newer technologies new you know dermatologically tested this and that right. you know, a lot of stuff is happening so you know as a disruptor yourself how do you see this competition building and how do you aim to keep you know sugar's market share intact and also keep it growing <laughs> so it it's very uh, you know it, it's amazing i mean we've always mentally thought of ourselves as a david versus the goliaths right so we are trying to steal market share from somebody and suddenly we see this report that oh wait wait there are some other new brands who are also stealing market share <laughs> so the good thing is that we uh, most new entrants so so when you when a brand starts if you have a lot of money and clout and network you can start with uh, you know offline distribution and directly show up on the shelves that is tricky because when you shop on a shelf it has it will already reach a critical mass before it becomes visible and somebody flags it to you that you know what there is this brand that's actually pulling in good numbers and by the time sometimes it's too late to you know strategize learn from them so luckily all the new brands that are coming in they are starting on mostly the same platforms that you can view and access even when you and I are sitting on our seats which is online so there are team like tracks competition very closely to not i mean to firstly learn I and mean, what are the keywords they are bidding in what are the product categories which suddenly there's a spike in reviews which mean you know commensurately the sales have also increased and then we you know take out our product roadmap and its charts saying that okay here are the categories here are the price points is there a white space that we are missing on the product in and in the past there have been occasions when we have seen one product get a lot of traction and we've uh prioritize that ahead in the pipeline so you know we need a horse in this race as well so let's just launch that so we are uh, trying to grow become big but not lose the agility which you know brought us here but uh, overall you know the first 5 years of building out the company we kept hearing that you know it's a niche market niche market a part of me is very happy when we see new competition and new brands because at least when you Uh, reach out to potential investors nobody's going to say that, you know it's a small market it's not a small market it, it's it's india we can't eventually it will not be a small market it's just that adoption has taken time but it's yeah. well on its way now yeah so uh, also if you could share your market share with us like currently what market share do you hold in the cosmetic uh, industry so this there is no correct answer to this unfortunately because uh, when we look at some of the um, you know nielsen kanta reports everything they always you know have, have rankings and exact because they give rankings of it's very fragmented color cost price the, the market data will have maybe a 6 to 5% market share and maybe you know we'll be just after that so in terms of ranking i at least that i know that currently we are in our category we are uh, third rank in most modern print stores that we are in which is the lifestyle the shop stop and the you know central new you health and glow and the good part is we get an average rank a lot of specific stores specific geographies we are even in the rank you know top two ranks in a few places so um i think i have a very good feeling about the coming season because this is a season where finally after two years we have hopefully a non interrupted season with a lockdown or stores being shut down in the middle and we can uh, uh, see a lot of what we have invested in our supply chain and our product play out so by the end of this year i think we should definitely show up in the top two places yeah so also makeup as a category is democratizing a lot a lot of people are getting introduced to makeup and there's a lot of people looking for you know 
education related to makeup how to wear this yes. how to wear that and sugar has been creating a lot of content around that so how do you see your in house content production involving evolving and also i mean are you looking to adopt a content to commerce strategy eventually so a lot has been talked about the content to commerce uh, mother uh, I, I, we are also, you know, watching very closely that okay, what is this? Uh, it's a very nice catchphrase. I and I really hope that you know the numbers. See, at the there's one part which is about are people coming to read and view and engage with my content, hmm. uh, which is which is happening. Clearly, it's happening. It's in the numbers, right? Now, for some strange reason, there's no direct data as of now public, available in the public domain which talks about. Um, of the say hundred people who come to view my post, how many of them? What percentage of them? Like for example, in the website funnel, you can easily see that okay, out of hundred people, maybe three percent, four percent, two point five percent conversion rate happens. Nobody is uh, none of our players in the industry have actually revealed data to say that okay, you know what does the top of the funnel peter down to when it comes to making uh, final sales? So we are keeping a close eye on it. For us, I think we've. We know that there are different metrics which move our funnel. So while the bottom of the funnel will continue to focus on conversions, for the top of the funnel, we don't directly put the pressure of measuring sales on them because then it's then I think you go you go astray a bit because then you start pushing discounts, you start pushing uh, gifts with purchase freebies, and our audience is not somebody who always likes to be sold twenty four seven. I mean, I will might end up unfollowing an account if uh, that account's always pushing products to me. So. Uh, the brief to our team is very clear that it's our responsibility, not just our job to uh, educate and entertain the audience who chooses to follow us and engage with us every day. So a lot of the content we create is, uh, you know, you know, biased towards that. That what can we talk about today? Which product can we simplify and demystify today? I think that's the lens we take, and um, I think we're very comfortable in that space. It's been helping us uh, grow our audience base on all social media platforms, and uh, we will continue to do it and do it in house. Right, uh, and also, how many uh, retail stores do you currently have in the country? And if you're also looking to expand your retail footprint, so if you look at our own, um, you know, there's this uh, company-owned company outlet, uh, which is a sugar-branded outlet, which is either stores or kiosks. So each month, we are current about 109, if I'm not mistaken, live stores. But number of sugar so that is currently, if I'm not missing it, 41,000 stores, which is a mixture of general trade stores, modern trade stores, all stores, not just stores that we own and operate ourselves. But uh, the universe is much higher. I mean, I know for a fact, Lakme stores are products are distributed through more than one, one and a half lakh stores. So we have a large headroom to go, which is what gives me confidence that as we continue to grow, the market share will continue to increase over the next three to four years. Right. And, uh, you know, uh... Are you also leveraging experiential marketing at your retail stores? Because that's really important. People are attracted to these things. So how are you, how are you looking so at I that? So I think we went deep when there was the safety protocols, very strict safety protocols. They were in your coming. You can't swatch products. You can't touch products. So at that time, you know, we had modified our own app, which would also open up on a tablet to show how, you know, using AR, how a product would look on you. The thing is, we are also trying to discern signal from noise. Because it's become, the first time you saw it, maybe two years back, it was like, wow, I can see this. Now every other Instagram filter has it. Yeah. So right now we're also asking ourselves that, you know, what is really wow and what is gimmicky? So we are trying to do less of what's gimmicky uh, mm -hmm. or at least even if, I, I think there's space for gimmicky stuff, but that's short, that's at a short shelf life. And maybe you do it for a campaign online on Instagram or something, which is actually a filter. On our stores, we're trying to see uh, more than just seeing a product visually on, on yourself. Um, can you order omnichannel even when you're in a store and the product is out of stock? Having the endless aisle concept, so we are see, seeing a single view of the customer, yeah. seamless loyalty programs. So we're mm -hmm. trying to build out a few of those features as we speak, and not just what we've seen in the past, which is virtual try-ons. Yeah. So from Sugar, we've often heard that you know even Vinita spoke about it at Goa Fest. I believe that you know we are trying to build a brand for the next two decades. So how are you you know so solidifying that at the brand front, and how would you summarize your marketing strategy overall? You know to justify that. So I think when we started the brand, we thought we knew product, and that was our forte. Over the last seven years, 
if i were to pick one thing which we understand better even more than product i would probably say our audience and that audience is also changing because seven years somebody was 25 earlier is 32 right now so we are trying to keep up with trends of okay what do if our audience base is beginning to use makeup at an earlier age what are they talking about what are they interested in are they on are they on fortnite are they on roblox what are what are they do right and because as a brand we have to find our space in their worlds because we can't expect them to come to our worlds every time uh, especially when they don't have shopping intent because shopping intent you have it when there is some pain in your that you're trying to address in okay i'm running out of kajal i need a new kajal but that is a that's a not a very emotional purchase you're just doing it to stop the worry that i'm going to run out of kajal actual brand building happens when there is no pressure to buy but there is a lot of excitement to buy and excitement <laughs> happens when the brand is seen in spaces which they identify with it could be an nh7 music festival or it could be sula fest or it could be you know a- a- anything you know so mm-hmm. we're trying to identify properties that the brand can uh, collaborate with i think as a brand and as an industry we think that this category is going to continue to grow over the next two decades because we are in very early stages and this industry has fantastic cross margins it has great applicability especially now that mm-hmm. the age at which our target audience starts working starts heading out of home or it's it just keeps getting earlier so i wouldn't be surprised if there are ranges which start targeting even teens you know uh, there are some reports around that so we have enough to yeah. build which is why as a brand i know that although we are beginning to really really spread out across the country it matters that even when the audience is not physically in our vicinity in the mall or in the store they continue to see us mm-hmm. on wherever they are spending time if it is television yes uh, like for example nobody very few part of our target audience still spend time on facebook right so what are the new avenues is, is snapchat the new place where we need to build presence in? so we keep obsessing that about about that a lot which is why we have a significant investment in our social media and uh, the content team and that's been serving us well mm-hmm. so i do it because it's been serving us well i think that's what we're going to double down on over the next decade as we continue to grow it's a, we are a right i know we are a part product part media company sometimes i feel <laughs> i think that's a good place to be at yeah today at i think in, it's my day yes, yeah. yeah. any final comments anything you'd like to add so i i think of our chat one of the most interesting things you touched upon is that how we had seven years of wearing the startup scrappy startup hat but at the same time we are aware that as the category goes there are a lot of newcomers who are now wearing the scrappy startup hat so we've got to straddle two hats we've got to compete with the big boys at the same time we absolutely absolutely can't lose what products here so the team is focused on uh, maintaining the core dna of the brand and company and i think as long as that we do that we're going to hopefully continue to delight a lot of our consumers uh, wherever we go so that's the dream right thank you so much koshik for doing this it was an absolute pleasure talking to you today thank you thanks thank you. for taking the time this was this was enjoyable thank you